Hey there, everyone. Just trying to get my camera fixed because it's all wumpus. There we go. Okay. So good morning. Good morning. Um, hi, Kelly. Rainbow Kitten, also known as Danielle. Um, let's see. Pearl, Carol, Valerie, and Sonia. Let's see. You're missing out on Diablo 4. Oh, I haven't even had time to finish working on WoW and like its latest expansion. So I just never have time to do anything. In fact, um, right after I stream today, I will be going back to doing my internship um, for dog training. So never, never a break around here. Barely get to color these days. Hi, Tina and Elise. So yeah, so today my book finally came. Um, so uh, this is the latest release from Teresa Goodridge. This is called Gnome Sweet Gnome, which is just a freaking adorable name. <laughs> I love play on words, but um, this released officially on Amazon yesterday. However, quite a few people got their pre-orders early. I am never that that lucky person that gets theirs early, so I always kind of feel like, oh, and then I, a few people said they were even in their craft stores already by Wednesday. Now, I could order this from the publisher and get it sooner, but, you know, I just use Amazon because that's just easier for me. So, today we are going to do a flip through first, just in case you haven't seen this book, because a lot of people only got it yesterday. And then after the flip through, we will start coloring one of the pages in there. And today we are going to use the Lyra Rembrandt Aquarelle pencils. So this should be pretty fun. We'll test them out, see how they do on a, on a page, um, which just helps me get even closer to finishing my water pencil battle. So... First things first, I'm going to zoom out. Well, I'm already, no, we don't want to go that way, do we? Huh? Oh, come on, quit being silly. Ugh, cameras today, I just have to lift us up, and then we'll have to zoom back down later. All right, so I don't know why my camera likes to get all, like, crooked, so I'm sorry for, like, all the, ugh. I wish I could like go back and edit this out so people don't thumbs me down for messing with my camera settings, but it's life. Um, hi, Peen Queen, D, Dawn, uh, Colorful Dreams, Brooke, um, Emily, if I didn't see that already. So I do have a second copy of this one coming. Um, Cause yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna like this, but let's get started. I don't have a ton of time today because, like I said, I do have to get to dog training here in a little bit. Um, so let's take a look-see. So, yeah, this is the cover. Um, this has been up since, you know, the pre-order was announced. Super cute. Even the back cover, I'm just like, oh. So I'm really excited. Now, as, as a lot of us big Teresa Goodridge fans know, they've been kind of changed, or not kind of been, they have changed the paper. It used to be a lot smoother. So like I could use, um, hi Vicky, I could use like water mediums and, um, or especially like watercolor pencils and it not leave scratch marks. Unfortunately, ever since they've gone to this well, you know what? It's crappy paper. <laughs> Ever since they've swapped over to this and got rid of this smooth one, like I can't even use my ink tents, which I used to love um, to just open up a Teresa Goodridge and break out the ink tents. And so I did scan and print the one um, that I wanted to color on paper that would not annoy me. So you do you, but uh, I'm a paper snob, I guess. So here is the front of the or front cover inside here. Now it does have the perforated edges still, so we can all just you know go ahead and um, tear them out if you want to. Um, 
Hi, Autumn. Colorful. Yes, you mentioned in a comment you sent a message, but I never got it. So um, I, I don't know where you sent it, <laughs> but I don't have any messages. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the images. Now I can zoom in a little just so you're a little closer up. World's slowest zoom, but if I don't go slow, then it goes crazy. Okay, so first page is actually super cute. I was letting my daughter and her friend pick five to choose from, and I would pick one of those to color. Normally, I'd have you guys vote, but I literally didn't get the book till last night. So um, they had picked this one, but I was like, oh, I'm going to save that more for winter. <laughs> but it's really cute. And then we have this one here. Oh, this is darling, isn't it? Look at that. I'll put it in the center. I think that's so cute. Oh, she has prints on Amazon. Are they on Create Space paper, though? Because if they are, I'll just keep buying her PDFs. <laughs> um, this ice cream one is adorable. I love this one. Like, it's a big old shoe house. Oh, so many fun pages. Teresa Goodridge is one of my favorites. Sometimes her pages can be a little overwhelming, but, you know, it just depends. But these gnomes ones, honestly, they look pretty, pretty tackleable. Tech is that a word? I don't know. It sounded like it would be. This would have been so cute for Valentine's Day. So I'm going to have to save that and try to make a mental note to do that. But I think this is so cute. This one is just freaking adorable. They're just working on their little cookies. A little camp scene. And then party time. This was another one the girls picked last night. But I was like, oh, I'm not feeling that one. <laughs> uh, there's like a little underwater scene. And yes, since I'm flipping through this at the beginning of this live stream, I'll go back later and create chapters, but I'm not going to make a separate flip through um, video. So yeah, I just want to put that out there because we're doing it now. Look at this one for Christmas. Isn't that cute? Oh, that's just adorable. Another one that you can do for Christmas or winter. Like on the trees. Oh, it's so cute. So this is like an all-season book, which is nice. The circus scene was pretty cute, too. I do like that they give the perforated edges because when I go to scan, it's a lot easier. The girls had picked this one, too. I felt bad because I was like, they're picking such great ones. But, like, this one I totally want to do in the fall. I mean, we get the pumpkins, the corn, the apples. Yeah, you can see why I would want to wait till fall, but it was a great choice. Uh, this one, Mystery of Mushrooms, as he's sitting on a mushroom. <laughs> thought that was cute. And then all the books, little owl. It's just adorable. All right. This would have been perfect for Valentine's Day. So next year, I need to make a note to definitely do that one as well, because that is adorable. Uh, then we have this one. As you can see, I've already pulled it out, but that's because I had scanned it. But it's our little gnome, like, painting his mushrooms. So I thought that was pretty adorable. Yes, my vocabulary is limited to cute, adorable, and oh my gosh. <laughs> um, doing her laundry. This is a little bit more detailed, but that's kind of like Teresa Goodridge's style. But it's really... Not too bad if you tackle things one at a time. The beach scene. This one I love, I love, I love, especially because it's already colored right here. And look at the way it turned out there. Just wow. So I really like that one. Okay. Then it says gnome sweet gnome on that one. So perfect. Yeah, these are really cute. I could see this becoming one of my 10 books to finish because there's not a page in here that I don't want to color. Um, this is going to be great in the fall with all the sunflowers, I think. 
while the watermelons is perfect for summer if you're like into seasonal coloring. Look at this one. It's so pretty. Perfect for spring. All those flowers. They're just having like a little tea and pie party here. Oh, thanks, Wondrous. I do, I do love a lot of the books I buy. I don't buy books that I don't find a color in. Um, even if they're going to be a new release, like if I have zero interest in coloring in it, it's not going to be purchased or shown on my channel because that's just how I am. This one would be fun, but this is a lot of work. There's a lot all up in there. <laughs> this one too, just wow, but it's super cute. I mean, come on. Perfect for spring as well. A little tractor one. I couldn't help. That one just, this made me like giggle. I don't know why. Could have been because it was like nine o'clock at night and I was tired or because it's legit cute. I don't know. Maybe a good one for fall just because I love doing hay barrels and stuff. So you could change all these trees to nice autumn colors. Yeah, I could see this one as a fall one. And we have one here. I think this is the last one. Gnomes are easy because really you don't have a lot of face to color. <laughs> it's like nose. <laughs> so, and then here's, oh, she, she colored in the, uh, the little shoe house. That's cute. I like that one. All right. So yeah, that is Gnome Sweet Gnome. Now I do have, actually, let me make sure I turned it on. Um, I do have the links already in the description. Um, I also have, <clears throat> um, I need to disable that. Uh, there we go. So the links are in the description and then Nightbot will occasionally pop them up. So yeah, we're going to be coloring in this today. However, like I said, because I don't like the paper that they have swapped to over the years, I went ahead and scanned it using just the Adobe Scan app on my phone. It's free. Like, I can't believe how many features they give you for free. I have, I don't even miss anything. So I'm like, what do, you, what do I get for paid? But I uh, scanned it and then I printed it on my favorite Nina 110-pound cardstock. But I do want to warn you guys. So I've been using this cardstock for three years four years. It used to always be smooth on both sides. However, the the ream I just purchased, same same everything. They have changed things up. So it's a slightly bit toother on one side and then super smooth on the other. So that actually makes this paper a little bit more versatile when I'm recommending it to you guys. So if you prefer some tooth, you can print it on the back end. If you prefer nice and smooth, you can print it on the other end. Um, only thing is I wish they would have kind of like, I don't know, said that in the description, but I was kind of caught off guard because I went to print and I'm like, why does this feel so rough? <laughs> so yeah, that was an interesting one. So this is the page I decided to color. We've got our little gnome painting his mushroom. It's really like springish, so I want to do some bright colors. And then we're going to use the Lyra Rembrandt Aquarelle Pencils. I have the 72 count set. Oh, I thought I had the 48. That was my bad. Um, we know I have full set syndrome, so I guess that was why I got the 72. But um, it doesn't, yeah, surprising. Okay, so these are the colors. As you can see, they're very bright. Um, I'm digging all of the colors in this set anyway. But the only issue I have with this set is their browns are kind of meh. But that's not a big deal. So we're going to color with these pencils, see how they do, especially with mixing and whatnot. And we'll go from there. 67-pound uh, Bristol vellum. I'm just not a Bristol vellum fan. I have tried it um, at a request, you know, and then also I tried it in my quest to find the perfect... Paper, paper is a very unique choice. Um, 
So there's no right or wrong paper selection. I highly suggest trying a few different brands, see what you like. Um, Cause like I said, I had, I had gotten like Strathmore and Bristol Vellum and because everyone told me you had to use those, those were the best. And like, I just, I was hating it. And then I started using Astro Bright, Nina Astro Bright, I think is what it's called. Um, and I loved how smooth it was. And so then I found this one, which was cheaper and in a bigger pack. And that was when I really started to fall in love with this paper. So it's all your coloring style, you know, and it also depends on the pencils you're using. Super smooth cardstock like this, you wouldn't catch me pulling out anything that gets too sticky. You know, some, some pencils need those layers to grip. So really personal preference, no right or wrong. You do you and go from there. <laughs> All right, so let me pick out some colors. I'm going to start with the trees up here, I think. But yeah, we're going to start with the trees. Just to get them out of the way and so they're drying, I do have my Ranger heat tool plugged in just in case we need things to dry a little quicker. Oh, got some things in the way. Um, so I'm going to do... Now, these ones are pretty nifty. So they come in a tin, and you can just lift them up with these paper things, and it pulls the tin right out. And then you can stack them like so. Makes it a little, little easier to get a hold of. Okay, so I think. I do like render. I use that for markers. I really like the render ones. I'm going to do permanent green wherever it is hiding. Oh, but I also want hookers green. Okay, so I got hookers green, permanent green, maybe. Where are you? Did I like just go right by you? Let's see. True green. Well, this is fun. I'm missing a color already. You know, if I remember right, some of these were labeled wrong. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so let me see. And then that one is 74. All right. I think we're going to go with ooh, the choices. Do you like the hooker's green? Actually, chrome green might be better. And that reminds me, um, now that I'm working with these again, I remember that the names don't always match the number. Uh, so keep that in mind with these. They had swapped names out a while back, so I'm going to have to update my own sheet. But I just want the light green in there, too. Um, should we go with this one or should we go with chrome? I think we're going to go with chrome because that's a little, yeah. So it's called chrome here, but it's actually been changed to moss green. I hate when companies do that because then you're like, ah. But what was interesting is um, there was a sleeve on the casing and that had the old names, but then the pencils have the new names. So just go by the number if you did that. Okay. So. Yes, I've used the Spring Hill. I'm not a Spring Spring Hill gal. Trust me, I've tried a lot of papers. Um, I just prefer to use, like, you know, the Nina 110-pound, but... I have tried a lot of papers. It just, it took me a long time because I was struggling so much with my coloring and it turned out it was the paper. So just an interesting fact. All right, no, yeah, no, autofocus is gonna do that. So we don't wanna do that. There we go, okay. So yeah, I, I have tested quite a few papers. Um, I never made a video on it or anything because 
My goodness, I'd have to first go buy them all again. I gave them most away. I'm going to turn this a wee bit, but if you end up coloring along, you'll still see what you're doing. So I'm taking my hooker's green, which is just my darker one. I'm just going to kind of put it in some of these areas where it's, I want it darker, like where things are overlapping. And I want to do just tons of bright greens. Like I just want to embrace spring. So no yellow, no nothing fallish, nothing wintry. This thing's just going to be green. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, I buy paper in bulk now, but I didn't while I was testing because that would have sucked. <laughs> but now I do. Um, like... In fact, the only way to get a hold of my favorite paper for markers is in bulk, which I'm fine with because I know I love it. I've been pricing out new printers though because my old one is finally, finally on the fritz, if you will. But um, I like replaced its toner cartridge because I'm not quite ready to pull the trigger on a printer and the toner cartridge last like two years. So I'm like, well, I got two years to figure it out, I guess. So I'm gonna just do this small section to make sure I like it. All right, now I'm using moss green, also gnome, known, also gnome. <laughs> it's also gnome. Oh no, that's gonna be rough. Also known as number 68, because like I said, depending on where you get your chart, you might have a different name, but the number should match up. So now I'm just going in with this one and just kind of placing it. I'm not press like pressing hard at all. Um, you should never do that with your watercolor pencils because you never know if they're going to leave lines behind. And also it saves your wrists a lot of like aches. Like if you have wrist problems, I highly recommend using watercolor pencils. You can always go back and use most brands dry to add some more texture, but it really saves your wrists. Um, okay, now we're on to the light green, also known as number 71. Just filling in a few spots. I'm leaving some white spot as well. We're gonna like drag colors. But let's see. Get those in there. Um, let's see. Hi, Kathleen. Um, oh, the story behind Hooker's Green. Crap. I do know this. It's named after like the artist or something like that. Um, but like I, I couldn't tell you the full, the full story. But I keep meaning to, like, look it up, so I can like answer that on the fly. But yeah, no. There we go, see? Artiste. I was on the right track. Why is this Tombow not wetting? Oh, that's interesting. All right, guess we're using the Derwent today. I didn't list all of my watercolor pencils, um, or not pencils, uh, watercolor, oh my gosh, water brushes in the description because I'm going to be switching between Derwent, Prima, Tombow, and Kirataki. So yeah, that's just a lot. Um, but the rule of thumb is always start where you're the lightest and wiggle your way into the darkest. Once you have pigment on that brush, unless you're planning on dragging it, wipe off your brush. And then you can kind of like dab it around too if you're noticing like anything that looks too splotchy. And then that is the secret. Just wiggle, wiggle. If you want to do it without a water brush, you can use a paintbrush. You can use a Tombow. I recommend using a Tombow because they are water-based instead of a colorless um, alcohol blender. So use your colorless Tombow to blend them. But um, that's just because, you know, this is, it just seems, or it looks better, I should say, to me. 
I've tried it with the alcohol marker on these and I prefer the alcohol marker for ink tints, but definitely not when it comes to watercolor pencils. Uh, hi, viewers of you. Um, making sure I didn't miss anything. Color, color blind pencils. I must have missed that somewhere in the chat. I don't think I have any mods today. <laughs> might have to, might have to give someone honorary mod status because I just remembered. I don't think I have mods today. Let's see. Okay. Uh, when would you use color blend pencils? You mean like the, the Spectrum Noir color blend pencils? Okay, so I like how that looks, but it's not quite dark enough for what I want, but I used a pretty light layer. So I'm just gonna be a little bit more generous with my pigment as we come across the tree. And then um, we'll go from there. So like the more pigment you put down, obviously the more payout. But when I say more pigment, I don't mean more pressure. Just add more layers of the pigment there. Pressure leaves lines. Pigment just means it's more vibrant when it's activated. The Lyra are really pretty, but I'd have to say, you know, compared to other brands out there, they do mute out. But then again, they're watercolor pencils. You kind of want that watercolor opacity. Or not opacity, transparency. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends. Like, if you want something really opaque, get some museum aquarelles and go to town. But, yeah, I do notice that, like, these colors can dole out a little bit more. Um, there's a few other brands I feel are just more vibrant and don't require me to sit here and, like, put tons of pigment down just to get the color. But... Um, okay, have fun with your Diablo 4. I, I haven't even gotten to freaking learn how to fly a dragon yet in WoW, so I'm really behind on all games. I'm taking care of the dogs still. Um, like I said, I'm in the middle of learning tra dog training um, so that I can get certified. Um, so I'm like basically working multiple jobs now and yeah, it's just been a little, little busy. So I, my, uh, finished pages, I did, I never recorded one for February, but I will just combine February and March, but like, oh my gosh, I need to finish those so I can start at least getting on Instagram. I don't want to do like an Instagram dump. <laughs> Oh, she wrote color blend and, and you read color blind. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so, yeah. And then I did just release that video on Neo Color 2 versus Lyra Aquarel, Aqua Color <laughs> um, and the Mungyo. I know quite a few, a few of you mentioned the other Mungyo, but I was only using those ones because those specifically I've been asked, oh gosh, not even joking, like 40 times. Um, so yeah, I had to, I was doing the ones that had been the most requested, but I did mention at the end of that video, um, I know it's hard to stick around to the end of the video to catch all the, the goodies, but at the end of the video, I had mentioned I have other water-soluble crayons already literally sitting over there that I will be, um, uh, whatchamacallit, doing reviews and comparisons on as well. So, and I did mention I would do gel crayons. I noticed a lot of people asked about gel crayons. So I was like, wait, didn't I, didn't I say I was going to do that? And, but I said it at the end, so I can see why it didn't get heard, but I do plan to do that as well. So no worries there if you requested it. Um, but yeah, that's up in case you're curious. I mean, 
I love the Neo color though. It's gonna be hard to beat those just because of what they offer for the price, but I know not everyone can afford Neo color. Let's see. Yeah, like so anytime they have book releases, you'll notice that the dates bump up or bump out. More often than not, they bump like sooner, but um, yeah, like my Kirby is arriving sooner than it was supposed to. Um, one of my mythographics is um, the artist Maggie Ontarios um, actually sent me an early release of the Flowerscape book. Uh, but it hasn't come yet. She, poor thing. She's really bummed because I guess her publisher uh, only sent out six out of like 20 something they were supposed to send. <laughs> so she was like, ah, so I should have that um, by Monday. And I'll make a video on that one because I'm really excited for that one. But uh, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> she was just like, oh, no. But I can't imagine the stress and then, like, things not getting delivered. Oh, man. The Color Blend by Spectrum Noir. Um, yeah, I plan to do some videos with those. I need to play with them myself. I also have the Aqua Blend by Spectrum Noir for this color pencil battle. <clears throat> Water color pencil battle. Um, that I'll be playing with too. But yeah, I'll do some videos. Like, um, I love that you guys give so many suggestions. It's just, I can't jump on them right away. I wish I could. But I do keep a running list. So they're never forgotten. Um, I do keep a list. It's just, I, yeah. Ugh, time. Where does time go? All right, now we're back to the light green. And especially this week. And, oh, I got so mad because this morning, right before stream, my son's soccer coach was like, I would like to change the boys' soccer practices to Thursday, or uh, Monday and Thursday. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. He legit picked the two days my daughters have sports. And worse is the times overlap them. Like, I was like, okay, um, I might need to find someone to carpool with because, yeah, like, uh, I have no idea how I'm going to work this. <laughs> I mean, come on. Both days my daughters have, pra like, uh, their own sports are the days now that he's practicing soccer at the exact same times. <sighs> oh, thank you. Yes, thumbs up always helps my channel helps others find my content, just lets a good old YouTube know you like watching it. So I always appreciate thumbs up. If you can. Let's see. All right. Now with this one, I am going to finish it on camera. Um after stream as well because like I said I won't be streaming super long today because I gotta go get to work and train some dogs not my own dogs other people's dogs <laughs> but gosh I need to train my own dogs too because one of them's being a turd but I will give you an update on uh, the puppies um, first of all thank you a big thank you to everyone who has sent donations towards their vet bills like i cannot tell you and my husband cannot tell you enough how much that means to us um because yeah we we were quite stressed um and we received a lot of donations and i instantly just transfer them from my paypal right over to the vet <laughs> so i should say the credit card i put it on but yeah, like I've just been putting it straight towards it and I appreciate it so much because that's just like one less thing we are stressing about. Um, now, Indy, uh, Indy's the one that was hit with the, the 22 and had to have actual surgery. Get this, the dog that had like actual surgery is running around like crazy. She's fine now. Like never been, like she was never shot. <laughs> 
which I guess is good, right? I mean, she's fully recovered. She's off all pain meds. She finished her antibiotics. She got her staples removed. She's doing great. Um, poor little Harper, on the other hand, is not. Um, she keeps getting infections. Ugh. And we took her in. When I, I took her Monday. Was it Monday? I don't know. No, it's Thursday. And <laughs> this week is all screwy. I took her in Thursday um, to get her uh, her leg checked. And unfortunately, they have to sedate the dogs to do x-rays and stuff because they don't want them to move and, like, you know, like, re-break anything that's healing or break it worse. And unfortunately, so it's because she's been moving around, like, the sedatives they've given us. She's a husky for one. It's really hard to just get a husky to sit still, even on the, the strongest of medications, but she won't sit still. And so I had told the vet, I was really worried about her leg because she would like bang against the kennel and then start yelping. And she was just in a lot of pain. So it turns out not, I mean, we found out a couple of weeks ago that it's both the tibia and fibia that are broke. But now they're a displaced or starting to become a displaced fracture. So they're trying to keep it in line because if it does displace, they'll have to operate. And then by then, I don't even know what the heck I'm going to do because like, oh, my gosh. Um, so, yeah, they recasted it. They have increased her sedation meds and shocker, not working. <laughs> they're like, we'll try one and a half trazodone. Yeah, don't work, lady. <laughs> So I got to call them on Monday and be like, yep, still not working. She's still crazy. Like we let her out and we let her roam a little bit around the house just so she can, you know, get her legs stretched out. But man, that girl is not sitting still. Hi, Kate. I hope you're doing good, sweetie. I sent you a message. Um, Hi, Debbie. Yes, yeah, so we've been getting a lot of donations. We still have a lot to um, to pay out of pocket, but even but even still, just the donations have helped tremendously. Like just kind of ease that, especially since my job is kind of. Oh, I like every day. I'm just like waiting. Am I gonna get laid off today? <laughs> that's, that's a wonderful feeling to like sit down at your desk and be like, mm. it's a it's a glorious feeling. So, but yeah. Every penny has helped for sure. But we have a long road ahead with Harper. And I asked the vet because they had to redo her cast. They're like, oh, we're looking about eight weeks. I'm like, okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, but every week we need to go in for a check. And then every two weeks we need to go in and have an x-ray and it resplinted. So what sucks is every two weeks, they have to sedate her because, again, they can't pull the splint off when she's just wide awake. I'm going to pull some color off the tips of these now. Um, so they'll have to sedate her and then redo her cast. And I was like, ugh. So, yeah. I got, like, that I'm not too thrilled about. Uh, let's see. How big is her kennel? So we actually downgraded her to a smaller one that she couldn't move around in as much to try and just force her to lay down um, because she wasn't a, a bigger kennel. So I moved her into a medium one. Uh, the problem is, is the vet said she still needs to be able to turn around just because she could accidentally lay down uncomfortable or she just needs to adjust. I mean, you know, think if you had a broken leg, like you're not going to be able to sit in the exact same position, you know, you're going to want to be able to move a little. And so she's in um, one of our medium kennels so she can still move around. But the other day, um, I was running errands and I came home and that little turd broke out of her kennel. Like she banged against the door so hard that she bent the metal and then wiggled through the hole that was like this big. I kid you not. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, Clearly she wanted out, so I'm going to just give her that one. So then I had to put that kennel in the basement and grab our spare. There's nothing like 
I'm so glad I had a spare because I would have been like raging mad if I had to go buy a brand new kennel. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been a long week, very long week. Let's see. Oh, no worries, Kate. I know you've got lots going on, sweetie. No, don't, don't worry at all. I'm happy you're here, though. Hanging out with us. You message me back when you feel like it, sweetie, and when you have time. I can only imagine. So I am not offended whatsoever. Okay. <clears throat> you had to get a solid one. Yeah, so my trainer does have one of those solid ones. Um, I'm going to see if I can borrow one for the next couple uh, weeks while she's recovering because I don't want to buy one of those because we're not going to use them as often. But then again, I don't know. I might need to buy one anyway because um, we are working on building our boarding facility out here on my property. So maybe I'll just buy one under my, my new business. I don't know. Too much, to, too much to think about. I just want to color gnomes. <laughs> All right. So I think I'm debating how I want to do the back of the forest. It's hard to say. Let's get the trees done. I want to incorporate some green into them, though, so they look mossy. Ah, let's see. Like I said, their browns are just kind of kind of, I don't know, meh. I mean, like, that's their Van Dyke. All their raw umber and brown ochres are pretty blah, and then they have just a really, really dark, deep sepia, and you're like, huh, that's kind of weird. But I think we go Van Dyke Brown, which may have a different name. I don't know. Let's see, that one's raw umber, so it should be this one. Okay, so we got the Van Dyke Brown. I am going to pull out the sepia. And then I think I'm going to take that hooker's green again. I swear that one was labeled hooker's green. Yeah, okay. So for the trees, we're going to use the hooker's green, dark sepia, and Van Dyke brown, Van Dyke brown. I always say Van Dyke because that's my last name. <laughs> so I don't know. Works easier. Oh, yes, for sure. I, you know, getting out there and talking is always helpful. And I'm always here if you need to, to vent to me, my dear. So just reach out. All right. So I'm going to take some sepia and just kind of toss this in here, here and there. Okay. The one thing, I love Teresa Goodridge. Don't get me wrong. Love her. But the one thing she always does that drives me mad, I'm like, where is the line going? <laughs> Do you guys ever notice that on some of her books, like the line just kind of kind of blends in and you're like, wait, where'd it go? Or there's like no line and you got to draw it in. I always laugh about that because I'm just like, what was she doing when she was drawing that? Was it kind of like, ah, oh, da, 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 well, done. And then just moved on and didn't finish the tree. I don't know always curious on the process or if that's just like legit part of her style I don't know because it happens a lot it's got to be part of her style by now right let's see I'm not seeing there's a line here I'm just gonna make that okay let's see I'm just taking the sepia and trying to darken up some of these areas where I want it this dark, because this one does come out pretty dark. All right. Ooh, should I do purple mushrooms or red mushrooms? Gotta decide now, because that's gonna determine a lot in my color palette. I love red mushrooms, but I feel like I do them too often. So I don't know. There is a very good selection of purples. Um, ooh, they even have some like reddish pinks in this set that would look pretty good. You guys tell me what you think. 
if we should go red or purple with the mushrooms. Purple, red, purple. So we got two purple. Yeah, so Kate, it's like, that's the thing. It can be really intimidating. Look into this book, though. I think you'd like this one. It's not as like, ah. <laughs> Some of hers, I just ignore the lines and color over it. I'm like, this is now all grass. <laughs> so I hear you on that. Just lots of detail. You kind of have to decide what detail you're going to pay attention to and what you're going to be like, you know what? I'm fine. I don't need that there. Let's see. Red butterflies. Yeah, we could do red butterflies and purple mushrooms. Still with the sepia, just adding that in. I'm adding more pigment because I want these a little more visible. Now, one thing, um, I had someone ask me the other day. Hi, Shannon. Um, I had someone ask me the other day, like, you know, so why don't I do, like, two, three, or four layers? Um... So if I'm coloring something with watercolor pencils, I'm not going for the effect of using a non-water-based pencil. Like I'm I'm not going for, you know, the the vibrancy of Prismacolor. I want it to look like it was painted with watercolor. Um I want that flowy feel, that transparency. Um so that's why I don't, you know, sit there and like keep layering for days or anything like that because I'm actually going for the watercolor look because if I didn't want the watercolor look then I'd be coloring with Prismacolors today so yeah if any of you have ever wondered that because uh, I get that question a lot that is why now that's not to say I won't go back in when it's dry and like add a few flicks here and there for accent but overall my goal is to make it look like it was paint or like you know done with watercolor um I like the look it's subtle and it's just it's really pretty and elegant I don't know it's just my it's my thing if I want it if I still want to use something that's water soluble I'll go with ink tense and still get that vibrancy but no I definitely like I like the look of the watercolor so that is why I don't go crazy with the layers uh, let's see. We got purple. Purple. Are we tied on? No, wait. I think we got more purples. Yeah, I think we have more purples. Hi, Autumn. Did I say hi, hi to you earlier? I can't remember. I'm sorry. I woke up this guy <laughs> this morning, you guys. I was going to sleep in because I knew I was going to go dog training today. And dog training is so mentally tiring let me tell you like <laughs> it is tiring very tiring <laughs> I don't know how my dog trainer trains eight dogs all day I'm I'm working up the mental like capacity but oh my gosh you're like breaking a sweat and you're like not even walking it's just yeah your brain fills and just spills over and woof it's rough. <laughs> so um, I was going to sleep in this morning to mentally prepare. By the way, I'm now on the Van Dyke Brown. Um, but then my husband woke me up to kindly let me know, because he was on his way to work, that one of the dogs left a mess for me to clean. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, let me just let me just get right on that. And it's Akira, who is normally kenneled at night, but our kennel is currently occupied by Harper. So I'm going to have to get a kennel for her because she has lost her privilege to roam pretty much, which sucks because she's over a year old. She should know better. Magenta. I do have like a... I'll show you guys when we get over there. Um, after I finish these trees, I'll show you guys. But there is like a really pretty, like, um, cause they have a Bordeaux color that would kind of give a nice more red-violet vibe. I don't know. It's one thing about Teresa's pages. You're like, I want the colors to all go together. But at the same time, I want, like, things to pop. Get this in here. So these go down really smooth when they're dry, which is always a good thing because 
If it's scratchy, oh, I hate the scratchies. But I wouldn't say they are the smoothest out of like the various brands I've used. Um, but they are quite smooth. Um, my son is getting back into dog training. The problem is uh, he, you know, when school started and he still had soccer season, he wasn't able to go and train as much. Um, and then our trainer moved. So it was even harder for me to get him out there. Um, but when I decided I was going to start my Husky rescue, I had already talked to my dog trainer about going into business. And so we're um, working on getting me certified, which is why I'm interning with him. He's a kennel master, so he can sign off and get me AKC registered. Um, so I'm working with him, and then we're going to be building a facility in our backyard because we own all that land, and it's just sitting there becoming a fire hazard, basically. Um, but that's where the facility is going to be built for dog training and then the rescue dogs as well. The rescue dogs will be kind of my pet project, but he'll help on it. Um, but that'll be kind of separate from our joint venture dog training. But my son's going out there today. He'll get to learn some more dog training. But yeah, it's just hard until my son gets his license. He can't get out there. Um, and I still have a day job, you know, so like I have to still have to work. I think that was part of the leaf, but we're going to make it a branch now. So we'll see on that one. Um, I wish to, but you know what? If you can get that Adobe Scan app and a decent printer, it's not too bad. I mean, yeah, it sucks that you have to print these out uh, because they changed the Teresa Goodrich paper, which, by the way, they still won't tell me why. I just, I just get told, well, they haven't gotten back to me. And I'm like, well, it's been like for a year now. <laughs> so... So I just don't see them going back. They're clearly okay using the crappy paper that they've installed. So, hi, Claire. Um, yes, the like I was telling everyone earlier, this is the hooker's green, by the way. I'm just adding a little green here and there. Um, Indy is doing great. She's running around, playing, acting like she never even had surgery or a bullet in her chest, which is interesting. And uh, then the other one's still going to be in recovery for a while. In fact, she's got to go back to the vet this Thursday. Oh, oh, I don't even want to think about it. The, I, like by now, I feel like I just need my own parking spot at the vet. I think I've earned it. <laughs> it's like, especially because I have to go there weekly. I'm like, come on, guys. As much as I'm paying you all, give me a spot right up front. Because I have to lift this 52-pound Husky out of the back of my Yukon, and I'm not really a strong gal. I need to clearly do some weight weightlifting. Let's see. Um, oh, thanks, Kate. But yeah, it's just nuts with those, those dogs. Ugh. It's just nuts in general how much things cost, right? Like, and what's sad is when my dogs got injured, I will admit the first thing I asked my, my mom, <laughs> I was like, how much is this going to cost? But like, that's something you have to think about these days because everything is so expensive. I still can't even fill up my gas tank for under a hundred bucks. I'm just like, oh, you know, like even our grocery bill keeps going up. And I'm like, tell my kids, why are you eating that? I just bought that. Like. <laughs> Kids aren't allowed to touch the groceries anymore. <laughs> I'll buy something and be like, no, no, I just bought that. Eat something else. Like, I want to see it last two days. Hi, Mona. But I think it's funny, like, when you start, like, rationing the food to your kids or you're like, no, don't touch that. Do you know how much that costs? I've become that mother, too, that's like, do you know how much this gallon of milk costs? Don't drink, like, don't pour yourself this huge glass and then drink half of it. Yeah, everything out here is just nuts expensive. I'm sure that's like all over the country though, not just here. I'm just baffled. Yep, 
Yeah, uh, Debbie, I did leave like the donation link up for anyone who wants to still donate. Um, it's on my, I have it on my Kofi, 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 whatever, that thing. Um, and then um, my PayPal. So yeah, like if people do still want to donate, they're more than welcome to, but actually, I think I'm going to start, yeah, I'll start on this side. Um, but no obligation. Honestly, like just watching my videos and all that helps me because then I can at least earn some Google revenue and that's going straight to the puppies and their wonderful bills. And we're still actually waiting on the investigation with animal control. I was like, well, please do take your sweet time on this. It's no rush. My dogs were only, you know, injured, <laughs> but do do take your time. Let's see. Ooh, seeds in the paws. That's got to hurt. Wow. Uh, we bought a thing of strawberries today. Oh, my gosh. Yes, strawberries. When when we get strawberries, I'm like, guys, listen, don't go eating these all. Like, you know, have a few of these and then eat an apple, which because apples are still cheap. <laughs> like, don't be touching those strawberries. Because berries out here, all of our berries are imported. It's one thing I miss about living in California. Like, we used to have the strawberry festival, and, like, at least produce was a little more reasonable. But, uh, I mean, eggs are still nuts in price, so we're, like, bartering with our neighbors who have chickens. Like, literally, we're going back to old times, everyone. Like, we're bartering services. It's like, well... My son can come help take care of your goats. Like if I can get a couple dozen eggs every month, <laughs> like that's what we're doing. Cause I'm like, I cannot afford this whole 20 bucks for eggs crap. Bye Debbie. So yeah, when I'm mixing these colors, I'm not too worried about making like a murky, ugly brown, but I still wanna like make sure I'm hitting the lighter brown before I drag it into that sepia. And then the green, I'm kind of activating on its own and just dragging it across everything. Oh, no one should feel bad about not being able to donate whatsoever. Like I said, just watch my videos. That helps me a ton. Never ever feel bad. Because I completely understand, and I honestly do not expect anyone to donate. That is not anything like I have an expectation for or anything like that. I do feel bad because I got a couple messages that some people sent some books for me to review to my P.O. box. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shoot, I haven't been out there in a while. So I'm probably going to have like a ton of book reviews pop up because I need to get out to my P.O. box because apparently a bunch of books are sitting there. But oh, it's just so out of the way. Um, so the reason I'm not buying chickens is just because I am not a chicken kind of gal. <laughs> I, I can't do chickens. Like I legit not only, like, do I just, uh, I think it's just so nasty because, like, I'll see the chicken coops and I'm just already, like, dry heaving. But um, I'm not going to, I kid you not, like, I am terrified of chickens. Like, if a chicken were to chase me down, you would hear me screaming <laughs> and, like, just running away. So, yeah, I, I got a major fear of chickens. Like, yeah, birds in general freak me out. But, um, yeah chickens like because my kids went to take care of our neighbor's chickens while they were out of town and uh the owner was like listen if they come to attack you just kick them away you know gently but like you just have to kick them away and kick them off you and I'm like nope I'd just be screaming bloody murder as I ran out of the pasture <laughs> so yeah I can't own egg or chickens and like if I if I trusted my kids enough to take care of them I would but like, with their sports and, you know, social life. What's a social life? Us parents don't get to have those anymore. But, um, 
Yeah, they, they just, I couldn't trust them to take care of the chickens. So then it would be me. And I, I'm always like preaching to my kids to face your fears. And I am totally in fa like totally fine with embracing the fact that I'm a hypocrite and I'm not going to embrace my fears and raise some chickens. So there, <laughs> like, I'm totally aware of the hypocrisy, but I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not going near those. Because when my neighbor was going out of town, I was like, well, if the kids can do it, sure. But I ain't doing it. I'm not going near those chickens. No. Let's see. Um, quail eggs or duck eggs. Uh, so right now we have to wait because we're going to build the dog training facility in the back of our property, like the back third. It's going to become a huge dog training facility. And by huge, I mean like huge. It's going to be a monster. Um, and then we need to get our gardens and orchards up and all that. And then, then we got to get some goats to help maintain it all. Uh, and then I'll look into like little, you know, ducks or something. But I don't know. So much to do. And like my kids, I love them to death. But. You ask them to do a chore and you have to ask them like five minutes later to do it again. <laughs> so, um, oh, seagulls. I grew up with seagulls in California, so I'm not as scared of those, you know, but, uh, yeah. Wondrous. I, I just explained like why I won't buy chickens. <laughs> like, no, it will not happen. I'll barter with my neighbors. We've got good deals going with the neighbors. It's great. Plus, uh, like, you know, I can be like, I'll walk your dogs, I'll train your dogs, I'll babysit your dogs. Just don't, don't make me go near the chickens. All right. <laughs> what shall we do? I do want to get, let's see, so it's interesting. So there's like cute little patterns on these. How adorable. Yeah, do as I say, not as I do is so my, uh my parenting style. <laughs> All right. So the mushrooms, let me get this back up so I can zoom out. Okay. I mean, that's the whole point of being a parent, isn't it? Like you can break your own rules. They just can't break them. Um, all right. So these are the colors that come with the Lyra Rembrandt Aquarelle. Um, not bad. Like I said, got a lot of purples, really pretty purples. Um, the reds are actually prettier than they look here, but, um, they are going to come out a little pinkish, but another option was this bo pretty Bordeaux color. It's got like a really nice pink violet, just lusciousness up in there. Red violet is what I meant to say, but y'all know what I meant. So yeah, I don't know, but there were a lot of votes for purple, and I do really like their purples. <laughs> so, because, like, I love their, their Delft blue. Like, this color is gorgeous. Mix that up with a little bit of deep violet and maybe add just a tiny bit of purple pink. And that'll be, I think that'll work out really well, actually. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm going to do. So let me find those. Okay, so I'm in Delft Blue, Deep Violet. Um, it's funny, so Deep Violet was renamed to Dark Violet. All right, that was a huge difference. Now I need to find my purple pink. So that's my Rose Mother. Let's see, so 28. Uh, yeah. Let's make sure. Okay. <coughs> oh, man, just birds, birds. You know what? Had I not seen that movie Birds when I was growing up, maybe I'd be more inclined to go around those flappy claw yielding things, but that's not how I grew up. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm going to do this dark violet. Um, this, uh, wait a minute. Why is this one all a different color? Hold that thought. <laughs> no, it says it's the same one. All right. So I'm going to go with this uh, Delft Blue Dark Violet. 
and they changed the name of Purple Pink to Rose Matter Lake, but they're both number 28. Ugh, why we gotta change names? There's one thing I wanna test real quick, though. I need to get my paper out, wherever it is run off to. <clears throat> Let's make sure this one is actually darker. Yeah, it looks like it might be once it waters down. Yep, okay. Just had to make sure. Hi, Heather. Yes, I'm happy I got the book too, but it was kind of, quite uh, annoying. I, I, I should have put some context in that community post. Because <laughs> I put in there like, oh, how, how depressing, you know. Um, my book's not going to arrive. And I had a few that were like, well, what's the big deal? And I was like, oh, I should have probably mentioned like new release, super excited. And then it got delayed and lost in shipment. And then it just appeared on my porch last night. So I was like, well, I know I'm going to stream tomorrow. But yeah, that was the reason I put that community post was it was more just like a, oh, you got to be kidding me, Amazon. And this isn't the first time they've done that with their pre-orders either. So I was like, okay. But yeah, normally if something's late, I really don't care. But with this one, I was like, no. Especially because it was in stores. I could have just went and bought it. But I had already pre-ordered it for the convenience of it showing up on my doorstep the day it released. At least that's what I thought the convenience was. Yeah, Bert, well, it's like uh, growing up, I had this friend whose mom had a, um, it's not a parrot. It's like a white a white bird and it talks, but like it would be, she would always have it sit on this like huge tree thing, right? But it was always right where you had to walk by. And like, there was no space between you and that freaking bird and it couldn't fly, but it, it had enough flight in it to where it could like straight up leap off and like just grab onto you. And one day it leaped off its little perch and like grabbed like the skin and like, you know, between your arm or like right in front of your armpit, I guess that skin right there and just bit and would not let go. I was like freaking out and this bird's like attached to me <laughs> and I'm like, ah, you know, and, uh, it was my boyfriend's mom's bird. Um, and yeah, and then she comes and grabs the bird off me and I had like this just like little bloody, yeah, cockatoo, thank you. Oh, things are evil. I had like this, like I was bleeding and she goes, well, you shouldn't have walked by it. And I'm like, well, where else am I supposed to walk? I literally had to walk into the kitchen and you have the darn like tree thing right in the center. Um, and I can't fly. <laughs> like, um, yeah, but I, oh. Yeah, I did not like that bird. Nope, nope, nope. So maybe that started the bird fear, although I'm pretty sure I had the bird fear before that. But I was never afraid of like seagulls. They didn't scare me. So, and I grew, you know, I grew up in California, so we had always had seagulls around. But yeah, that, that cockatoo or whatever the heck it was, that thing freaked me out. Especially because it just like, attacked you like a rabid bird <laughs> it was a very aggressive bird that's all I gotta say but no it was it was an interesting childhood experience that's what I yeah so every time my kids are like let's get some chickens because they think the baby chicks are so cute and I'm like yeah they are cute then they turn into like man eating crazy little things with wings I'm not touching those just one little pink up here at the top. It's a sun-kissed mushroom. I almost said marshmallow. It's a sun-kissed mushroom. Got some pink down here. And because these lighten up so much when they are wet, we will see what we get. 
All right, I think I'm gonna switch to my other brush. Maybe, I don't know, the Derwent's not too bad. I guess I'll stick with my Derwent. My water brush drawer needs some serious reorganizing. Some I like can't find my Zig Detailer. It's the yellow one. It's like gone. I don't know where it went. Half of them are downstairs. Half of them are up here. So that's part of the problem too. I just need to go find all my brushes and get them back in the drawers. But I don't mind using a mixture because sometimes like I find the you know, for bigger spaces, I actually enjoy this Derwent. Um, but then there's times like, you know, I want my Tombow for a certain thing. Or um, I even have some, oh shoot, what's the name of them? There's another one I really like and I can't even think of it now. Oh, I like that color. Yeah, I need to collect them all. But even my Primas, I'm down to one Prima and I swear it was like a three or a four pack. Uh, am I a cat person like I am a dog person? No. <laughs> um, but that's only because growing up, we I, I never met a cat that was, like, not mean. Like, my cousin's cat flew through the air and landed on your head to attack you. Wow, I grew up with a lot of, like, flying attacking animals, didn't I? Huh. Um, but, yeah, like, even my mom's cat was, like, just pure nuts. Um, so no, I'm not. I'm I'm a dog person all the way. No offense, like I, I, cats are great. Like they're hilarious. Our neighbor has one, and I'm always laughing at the things it does. But I don't want to own one. <laughs> so, and um, yeah, I'm definitely more of a dog person. And and with having four huskies, we could never own a cat because well, huskies and prey drives. Yeah, that's not a place where you should be bringing cats. Not that my huskies would hurt the cat, but they would be, it just, they'd be chasing each other. And yeah, I'm pretty sure my house would get destroyed in one little chase session. So these are dissolving really well on this paper. So that's always good. I've got to add a few more pink splotches. Oh, it flies off the stairs. Oh, it wasn't a Harper, it's Scout, yeah. Gosh, what video was that? It's a long time ago now. Yeah, when I first bought this, this house, Scout. <laughs> and you guys know I hate to edit. Like, I'm just, yeah, I don't got time to edit. But Scout just, like, flew off the stairs and you hear this huge thud. <laughs> but what can I say? She was like, listen, I got halfway down these stairs and... I'm bored, so she just leaps and flies. It's it's kind of cute. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I get them mixed up myself. Like, like when I'm calling them in, or worse, when I'm trying to punish one, I keep calling Akira Indy, and Akira is the one that's being naughty right now. And I'm like, ah, crap. So it makes it harder, but yeah. Scout's the one that I've always had. She's my baby. Um, Harper's older than Scout, but we just got her. She was the rescue. I'm just pulling a little off the tip to add like some, some more pinkish tones here and there where I want them. But yeah, Harper's four. Scout just turned um, three. My daughter made her a birthday cake. It was hilarious. So we give her her little doggy dog friendly birthday cake of course it's not made for humans although humans could eat it but the um and so we give it to her in a bowl and she's like just sitting there and at first I was like well should we tear it apart for her like because she was looking at it like what the heck is this thing and then like anyone that tried to go near it she like guarded that thing with her life <laughs> like she got really territorial and she's not normally that way but any dog that came to sniff it, she was just, Rawr. and yep, gobbled down that birthday cake. I swear it was like made of peanut butter, bananas, um, rice. I don't know, something funky. And it didn't smell that great, but I was like, here's your birthday cake. And then we put a little bit of peanut butter on it. 
as her frosting, but she's an old lady. She acts like an old lady. All right. Uh, Scout is the alpha because she's the first. And usually that's how it goes down. The first husky you get becomes your alpha, but on occasion that can change. However, we got, or every time we got another dog, we kind of got them far enough apart. But like Akira came second and there, Akira was such a scaredy cat. There was no way that girl was ever going to try and challenge the alpha status. And then we always, when we introduce a new dog, Scout meets them first because she's the pack leader. Um, and then, uh, you know, we let the others. But, like, even Harper, we were kind of worried because Harper's older and not spayed yet. She was supposed to get spayed that Monday. But then she got, you know, well, my neighbor took care of that. So we, she hasn't been spayed yet, so she has extra hormones. And all of us ladies know what happened when you get a group of ladies together, right? It's the same thing with dogs. <laughs> so I was like, uh oh, this is going to be interesting because she's got the, the extra hormone surge that Scout's never had because Scout was spayed. But uh, Harper tried to challenge Scout for Alpha and lost within like five seconds. So it was a good effort, though. Solid try. Uh, let's see, where do I get the clamp? Oh, like the paper, the little clippies, the clippies I use. You mean like these little clips here? Cause these I just got on Amazon. Um, they came in like a 20 assorted pack. So you get like small ones, big ones, the rose gold. So I thought they were cute. But, um, yeah, and then this is just a clipboard I bought on Amazon in a mandala pattern because I don't love mandalas at all. But, uh, yeah, I've got two mandala pattern ones, and they were cheap, too, but really, you can, you can get them anywhere. Um, office supply stores, craft supply, heck, even my grocery store has them. <laughs> all right, so I do like the purple on there. Problem is, is this, I have to wait till this dries a little more because I don't want this paper to start pilling on me. Hi, Dawn, and thank you. But I do notice it wants to pill a little right there, but that's because I went a little too much. Um, I kind of want to get, I'm going to leave these purples aside because I am going to use them for down here. But uh, I'm going to wait a second because I want to get some greens. What the heck is this line right here? There's just like a random line right there. And I'm trying to figure out what that is. Hmm. Um, I'll have to see, but let me do, I want to work on these like big blades of grass. And then I want to get these bushes taken care of. So I'm still going to want to incorporate some of the greens We've already used, but then I want to add a little more. Hmm. <laughs> Permanent green. Where's that one? 67. Is that you? That is you. Okay. So I think I'm going to take that one and the light green. We're just going to two color this. Hi, Doodle Robot, and color me happy. Well, thanks, Dee. Oh, no worries, Kate. Yeah, I know it's late for you guys over there in the UK. Like, you gotta already get the kids, like, going for bed. And that nuts? I'm like, I gotta get my kids to eat lunch. <laughs> but no worries. Thanks for dropping by, hon. So I'm just going to take the sap green and light green, also known as number 67 and 71, because depending on when you bought your set, your names may be different. I'm just going to work that in. Follow this one down. I guess I could zoom in a little, huh? I try to not, like, constantly zoom in and out. 
but I just feel like sometimes it's better so that you see what I'm working on. <laughs> I don't know. You guys tell me if you can see from far away. But like for me, sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't see what they're doing. But I hate just going back and forth with the camera adjustments. Okay, and then this one is twisting that way. I got I'm twisting in there. Okay. Some weird twisties. Some of these aren't making sense, but I'm just gonna roll with it and say whatever. Let's see, you got to watch NCAA. Oh, no worries, Beth. Thank you. Yes, come back and just watch later. It's a great thing about live streams. They're still there. I didn't watch the NCAA this year at all. I didn't watch much of any sports this year. Now I think of it. Kind of missed everything. I watched the Super Bowl, but really, like, I was kind of over it by halftime. <laughs> Just wasn't my year. All right, now I'm using the light green. Maybe it's because none of my teams made it in anything, so I was just like, I don't care. Thanks, Diane. I'm just lightly putting these down, but going over it a few times because I want a little bit more pigment. And while you can't pull it off the tip and get a really concentrated color, I just try to not do that a ton, simply because this type of paper pills with too much water and the more you're pulling off and putting on, the higher chance you're gonna pill your paper. And I'm not saying peel, I'm saying pill. Gotta enunciate. I think that's grass back there. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see how this works out. <clears throat> so like, as usual, I like to go into the lightest color, wiggle it into the darkest color. I went out of the line there, but I don't care because there's gonna be greenery back there. So no one's really gonna know, except you guys, because I just admitted it, so. Hi, Marcy. Oh, no worries. I don't have too much longer today just because I got to go to work, but uh, I will be here probably for a little bit, a couple minutes. <laughs> got to make sure I eat this time. Last time I showed up, yeah, there's a blade of grass right there I missed. Uh, last time I went, I didn't eat, and I was like, ah, I'm dying. Of course, I don't know about you guys, but is anyone already, oh, like, just already know they are going to have a case of the Mondays tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> like, anyone just already got that feeling? Because that's how I feel today. I'm like, I already know tomorrow's going to be a case of the Mondays. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just sitting there. I'm already prepared, so I guess that could be a good thing, right? Yes, definitely rewatched. Yeah, um, like my family is really big on college sports and uh, as not as big on pro sports, but I will admit I tend to watch pro sports a lot more. Now, well, I guess it depends on the sport, but like we have a ton of great college teams out here. I'm just, I'm just not very supportive, I guess. <laughs> But like I said, I haven't really had time to do much of anything. So, <laughs> like, I barely colored this month. So most of what you'll see in my completed pages um, that I combined with February and March will pretty much be February. I did do that page yesterday. I shared it on my Instagram. I am really struggling with the background because it took me so long. I spent... I got all the way to like episode five of Bridgerton just doing those roses alone. So I was like, yeah, these took too long. I don't want to ruin it. 
that in there. The background, I don't know what I want to do. I don't want, I kind of want it to be like a dark foresty background and not, you know, like this is the light area, but that's the dark area way back there. All right. Hi, Sarah. Oh, don't be shy. Never be shy. I understand though, because when I used to watch, or when I first started watching live streams, and I watched live streams, you know, while I was like had my own YouTube channel, and I was like super nerve wracked to speak. So I understand, but don't worry. Everyone here is very friendly. No one bites. I'm trying to figure out where. That one goes. I know this one goes here. <laughs> Sometimes it's a guessing game. I'm gonna say, you know what? It's just gonna be what I make it. That's the whole point of coloring, right? We get to decide what it's gonna be. I think I am, for this little paintbrush, gonna have um, it be glitter paint. So like he's he's painting glittery little mushroom spots. Oh, don't be nervous, Sarah. Well, at least you said hi. That's the first step. Everyone gives Sarah a big, warm, happy welcome so she knows how friendly we all are. I shouldn't say we don't bite because some people, some of us do, but we're harmless, harmless biters. <laughs> hi, Christina. If Emma was here, I'd say watch out for her. She bites. I'm just waiting for her to watch that um, back later and message me. <laughs> Let's see. I'll get this one. I am using Lyra Rembrandt's. Um, and then this is the new Gnomes Sweet Gnomes um, from Teresa Goodridge. Finally came. Every, like all throughout yesterday, I was like, so uh, anything on the porch, guys? Do you want to check the porch? And like my dog food order came, which I mean, is great for the dogs, but doesn't doesn't bring me happiness. Let's see. Oh, did I miss Mar Maurice? I think he said hi to Maurice. I can't remember. It's so hard. Things going back. And then the channel moves and you're like, oh, I can't remember. All right. Put that in there. Yeah, I think I like these two colors for the, the leaves here. Kind of just like, at first I thought they were going to be tulips, but then I realized there was no tulips on the page. So I was like, oh, because it definitely has that tulipy vibe to these little leaves here but I mean I could draw in tulips if I wanted to be crazy but yeah no <laughs> just bring up some of this dark green kind of wiggle it in there scumble I see wiggle some say scrum scumble <clears throat> Yeah, I think I'm liking that. And I think what I'll do is the background, I think I'm gonna do like dark greens. Um, now I've almost got the darkest of greens out except the juniper. So I'll probably end up doing that. And then butter, we got butterflies, all this grass back here. I've got to think of something cute, but I want to keep the colors cohesive because the grass, well, these are bushes, but the grass right here needs to like kind of match as I go down. And I may actually use for the grass color the same I did in the trees to bring it down here so that it's jiving. Because whenever I do colors on a page, like if I have something on top, it needs to be somewhere down here. So it's not like, I don't know, colorfully lopsided. <laughs> so that's just how I look at it. Like the colors aren't, they aren't even, do you have to do that? No, but it helps your page look a little bit more like it meant to go together. 
That's why whenever I'm coloring, I always leave my pencils out, but I also don't pre-plan my pages. So that's why I have to go that route. If you pre-plan, you might have already planned to like incorporate a color down lower. But for me, I leave the pencils out so I know, okay, like I need to incorporate this color elsewhere so that everything's looking good. I think, yeah, because his arm is there. So that's just whatever it is. Yes, so, um, well, that's right, because you weren't here earlier. So I did a flip through at the beginning of the live stream. So if you guys are coming in late, do go back to the beginning. I did a flip through so you could see everything in here and, um, you know, check out the book. But what I did is, yes, I, I pulled a page out, but then I scanned it and put it on paper I like because, as as a lot of us have noticed, the Teresa Goodridge, you know, pages have gone on to paper that's, well, not so awesome. Um, and I don't like using that paper, especially for watercolor pencils. Blah. So, um, yeah, I did end up scanning it, but you can use, like, I mean, Prismas work really well on the paper that they have, even the Artix, um, Starjoy, Castle Art, all those, and by Castle Art, I meant Castle Art Joy. Um, work great, but if I'm going to do a watercolor medium, I've noticed that paper, it just doesn't dissolve very well. Even my ink tents won't dissolve as well as I like, and it leaves funky marks that I don't like to see, and you might not see them from far away, but like if you look up close, you'll see like the marks where it kind of didn't dissolve and just created this funky little effect, and that'll annoy me for life. You got yours yesterday, lucky. Mine should have come on the day it released, but no. Wait, mine came yesterday. <laughs> but mine should have came Friday is what I was saying. But yeah, because mine was lost in transit. I hate those messages from Amazon. Like, no, how does it get lost? And worse, this came from a facility that's literally an hour north of me. I could have freaking picked it up. And I wish they would give me that option. But I'm liking this book. Maybe I'll do... So I didn't even realize it till this morning. I sent it to Melissa, one of my mods. I was like, hey, I didn't realize that I, uh, I passed 12,000 subscribers. So I want to do something for that. It's just things have been so busy that I've kind of space cadetted. So we'll figure something out for that. Um... Black Widows, uh, yeah, Black Widows work good on the paper that comes in her new books. I have used those, so I can let you know on that. Um, let's see. Can I recommend a single tip marker? Are you talking water-based or alcohol marker? Um, crap. I mean, most of the good ones are going to be double, like, have different tips. So I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think of like, I mean, Crayola super tips are about the only ones I can think of right now. Like my mind is drawing a blank, but I haven't used those myself. And they're water-based, which is cool because you can actually put them on paper. And if you hit them with a water brush before they're dry, you can get a cool little effect. But, um, is there a reason you don't like the the double tips I mean like you don't have to use the tip on the other side I mean it's kind of like with some of my alcohol markers they've got uh chisel nibs but I don't use them they're just there and if I was smart I would just like with my Copics change it out to something else but that would require time and money I don't have right now so let's see USPS lost my January sketchbox <sighs> Oh, so anyone here doing the Emma Lefebvre uh, monthly watercolor box? So I kind of had to like get snarky with Craftimo because I got the February box March 1st and the tutorial was super Valentine's-y. I need to still film the video, but I'm like, well, what's the rush now? Um, so like I was getting annoyed at that. And then I got a message yesterday saying my order was delivered. And I was like, wait, what order? You mean my March box? 
So, like, I go look at my subscription thing, and it says it hasn't even shipped my Mar March box. I'm like, oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm going to get this one in April, I guess. But so I sent them a message, and they're like, oh, sorry, our system occasionally sends out delivery messages. I'm like, that's not, that's not really a, uh, like, a thing you should have your system do. <laughs> like, because... I legit like panic and go, okay, did someone just like rip me off? Like, is this on my port? What the heck? So I'm getting really frustrated with the craft demo box. Um, absolutely love what comes in it, but the distribution. So this is craft demo's problem, not Emma LaFabe's problem. Craft demo. I'm really disappointed. Like, I'm just, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna I'll do an unboxing of my that's his arm. We're gonna just put this down here. Um I'm gonna do an unboxing of my February one. I'm gonna paint it, you know, in March. But uh yeah, I've left them a few messages because I'm just like, come on, like there's I know people in other countries get theirs faster, but they know they have a lot of US subscribers, so they need to plan ahead and ship on time if you're going to market this in the U S because that's getting a February like, um, box that is themed for that month in the next month is just kind of dumb, especially with how expensive they are. So yeah, Sonia, I know you get yours really early too. Um, so you're lucky <laughs> you get yours at a reasonable time. But I'm just like, Doo -doo -doo. and then, like I said, you know, I get these random, you're, your thing has delivered. And I'm like, no, it hasn't. Like, what's going on? I don't know. Craftimo, I don't think was prepared to take this job on. Um, let's see. Half month to get the pack of brushes that she had out. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to do the full 24 month to get all the brushes and all the paints, which kind of sucks. Uh, Sonia, the pigment info on the colors is wrong, too. Are you serious? So one of them says it's PW6. What is it actually? I, I mean, I haven't gotten the March box, but um, that's going to be annoying. So, yeah. I don't know. I guess, I mean, the idea was cool, and I was really excited, but I'll be honest with you guys right now. Like, I, I don't recommend it. Like, maybe when they perfect it in a few months then go for it. But right now it's, um, it's a load of bowl. <laughs> so I'm just like, Ugh. if they're putting the wrong pigment info, that's not even good because not, not everyone is well versed in watercolor pigment. Like I know what PW6 is, but not everyone knows what PW6 is and what that differs from. So that's, that's a real bummer actually. Just darkening up some of these shadow areas that I don't feel are dark enough. Oh my gosh, Permanent Green Deep was labeled as PW6. It's like not even close. <laughs> oh crap, I'm laughing so hard I'm going to get in a coughing fit. That's not good. Well, that's a, that's a big mess up. Yeah. PW6, by the way, is white. <laughs> like, not anywhere near the green spectrum whatsoever. Oh, wow. Well, that's a big foobar. Did they at least, like, give correcting information and tell us what, what pigment they used for their permanent green deep or no? Is it the same pigments that's in Windsor & Newton's permanent green deep? Because then I'll just look that up. I know they're kind of trying to mimic them without straight up mimicking them, but I know that was the inspiration. But yeah, PW6 isn't even close, so that's interesting. All right, now we're back to our light green. It is one thing I wish more watercolor pencil brands would do is let you know the pigments that they're using to create their color, but you know, you expect it on watercolor tubes and pans. You don't really expect it on pencils. Hi, Heather. Oh, it's 1.40. Yes, so you're already in the afternoon. It's it's uh, 11.40 here. 
Let's see. Oh, gross. I hope they didn't mix the titanium white in there. You're probably right, though. That's why it's on the label. They mixed it with PW6. You, I don't like, I don't like oh, PW6 in my, my greens. Keep that out of there. They need to go take a lesson from Roman Schmall. They got beautiful dark green colors and no PW6 mixed in there anywhere. Like, that's just not a color that should be mixed in with a green. <laughs> It's like, yeah. That's why when I buy like pastel watercolor sets, if I just see like PW6 is like, and then, you know, another pigment, I'm like, well, they basically just did what I could do. Mix titanium white with just about any other color and call it a pastel. So I hope that's, oh, grody. Well, I guess I'll find out in April, probably when my March box arrives. And then, like I said, I got to unbox that February one. But, um, yeah, I hope Craftimo starts getting it together because it, it really sucks because I love Emma Lefebvre. Like, adore her work, her brand. So cute. I love her style because she does wet on dry a lot, and that's how I prefer to paint. So it's easier to learn from her. So it really sucks that, like, Craftimo is kind of, like, screwing it up. <laughs> Art Snacks. Art Snacks was a pretty good one. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, when I did the art boxes, I, every single one I did, I felt was just missing something. But if you don't have a lot of art supplies, um, they're great. But if you've already, like, got a pretty good collection of art supplies, I wouldn't, I'd be careful about the art boxes just because you're probably going to get something you already own. I mean, like, that's how I ended up with double Copics, um, you know, a few of the same Tombos, same brush on one, on one companies. Um, I ended up with like a ton of eco line, uh, liquid watercolors that I already owned as well. So yeah, I, I recommend them if you want to like try a new type of art and you don't have a lot of supplies. But if you already have a lot of supplies, just be prepared, you're gonna have some dupes. But if you're okay with that, then roll with it. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> put it in double case. I ended up um, like shipping a lot of my doubles to some friends, cause I was like, do you want these? Like. I'm in an eco line watercolor, like these things here. This jar is gonna last me till the end of time. <laughs> like, <laughs> so when you get like two of those, you're just like, hmm, well, what am I gonna do with all that? I mean, it would take some serious effort to run through that bottle. I could get it done, but I would be doing it specifically just to waste it. But, um, yeah, so, like, when I doubled up on those, I gave a few away because I was just like, I am never going to get through the one I bought for myself, let alone the ones that came in my case. All right, so I'm going to activate this little leafy here, and I'll zoom out. Doesn't even feel like a Sunday to me, either. Probably because I have to go to work. <laughs> So I'm like, oh. I did like the let's make art. Um, those ones were so fun. But like, you know how the tutorial is like already on, on YouTube. So I was like, well, I already own like most of these supplies. <laughs> so it just didn't make sense anymore. But they do some really cute ones. Um, all right. So here's where we're at so far today. Um, I know it doesn't look like much. But we've actually colored quite a bit. Of course, I did start the stream out with a flip through of the book just because it's brand new. So, um, but yeah, like I'm thinking I'll keep going with our mushrooms later. But this will all be like varying greens using the, the same greens we've been using. 
Um, I'm going to make this a little bit darker, obviously, so that these pop, and then really dark back here. And since I have no idea what this line is, I'm just going to cover it up and pretend it never happened. And then, yeah, we'll be, I'll get onto the grass. But what I plan to do <clears throat> is, thank you guys, um, guys and gals, <laughs> what I plan to do is uh, I'll keep working on this on camera. So I'll do like another video this week. It'll be part two. It won't be live or anything like that, but I'll keep working on it. May, uh, it'll just be kind of casual. Like I mentioned a while ago, I wanted to get back into more just casual um, color and not color and chats, but like it's a color along, but I'm not going like crazy with the editing and the cards. Like you can color along with me, but pencil you want <laughs> like it's just very chill um so we'll finish this up probably I'm gonna say it's gonna need mm, three parts um but yeah with the Lyra it won't look too bad and then I'll add some accents so a few things pop but I think it's gonna be super cute and it's a really cute book so if you haven't where the heck did that book go <laughs> so if you haven't gotten the book definitely look into it. It's like, what, $6.99? <laughs> it's super cheap. Um, so, oh, I sound better? That's a, that's good, because I still have a scratchy throat um, and that cough, but it's, it is getting better, thank goodness, but ugh, I feel like I'm not quite there. But yeah, so you can get this on Amazon. In fact, uh, some places can get one-day shipping. So, um, I do have it linked in my description below, along with the Lyra Aquarelle watercolors. Once I finish this page, I'll do a review on these Lyra Aqua Aquarelle. Wow, I'm struggling with that word. Um, and then, yeah, I will battle them up against one of the bigger names. Um, I'm thinking these would be best to battle up against either... Uh, the Supra Color 2 or the Albrecht Durer because they are not quite a good competitor for Museum Aquarelle. <laughs> There's very few that can be, but we'll see. And then I'll also compare them to a few others that are of similar price and quality because these actually aren't, well, these are an artist grade. These are more on the budget side, you know. Ooh, Derwent. These would pair, these could uh, compete against the Derwent ones, and we'll see how those do. So yeah, I just got to play and see. Hot tea and lemon, yeah, I've been doing that. Although I will admit I've been drinking coffee more than tea. <laughs> I've been drinking coffee more than water too, so that's not necessarily healthy. But you know what? It is what it is right now. But yeah, I am going to head out. I got some dogs to go train and kids to round up. But thanks everyone for hanging out with me today. And until next time, take care. Bye now.